Hello everyone, Brett back, Aptitude Scale Modeling, and look, part 20 is upon us. We're going to paint today. We're going to paint using AK Real Color, all after I've faded. And after that, we're going to stop dropping the paint, do regular olive drab to darken some panels up. In case you forgot, we're doing either Thunderbird or Man of War. I was in the middle of masking and I realized, hey, I'm doing something here maybe somebody doesn't know. So I'm masking the underside. And if you look here, you can see these curves here, here, here. Now you can use Azu tape. Excuse my reach. <clears throat> which I have a lot of because it's great tape but that's good for straight lines and for curving when you have space to move around I tried it there and it just wouldn't work then I remembered I have these these are great so what I figured out as you can see from here and here where I've got curves And actually, I already did that side right there. But these have, there's four of these. There's straight lines in different thicknesses. So you can just take a good hobby knife. This is just Tamiya 12 mil tape, this one. Up against the line. So you figure out which thickness you need and then you put your knife I always start outside, outside of the tape, because I found if I start at the tape, I tend to wrinkle it. Now you don't have to put any pressure on it, just hold in the line and just go straight down. And then you don't need one long, so you go, and then, almost stabbed myself. I've got this wonderful little square of tape. Rectangle, sorry. Not only that, but by putting it down there, you're also detacking it. You pick up this knife before you do something stupid and step on it. So, straight lines, various widths. As you can see, I've been using it a lot. Different geometric patterns, triangles, squares, different sizes. And you've got these curves here, which is what I'm using for those tail parts. There's four total. You obviously don't need all four. There's circles of different sizes, more squares, and tiny, tiny little squares. And triangles and squares and all sorts of things. And then this one with bigger circular pattern. Four of them, running about sixteen or seventeen dollars each, depending where you want to get them. So, what I did for this one here, here, I figured out that this corner here would be perfect for that, right here. Then for this back one here, which has got a more exaggerated curve. As you will see here, right here, I figured that this big one here was better. So what I did was I aligned the tape up with the line. And here, let me just take this one off because we're going to use, let's see, make sure I got the right corner. Yep. So we're going to use this inside one, no, we're going to use this outside one right here. And corners do take a little bit of practice because you really do got to let the knife ride the line. And just follow it around. Sorry, follow it around. I'll do another one in a second. Peel that off. And... 
get the curve angle that you want that matches the picture, which is about there. Push it down, and you've got your curve going up to the elevator. Just like that. So let me show you that again. So I wanted to do this one in here. Sorry, my tape dispenser's in the way. Do this one in here. Again, put the knife outside the tape. And then just let the knife ride in. Get it the length you want it, and then you just cut it across. And there you go. And that'll work with any of these. It does take practice with the curved ones because your knife wants to come out. Now see, I like to have an open space to start in. So if I wanted to do this one, I would start to do at this angle, but I'd line the tape up with that line so I could let it ride the line just like that you've got is that or if you need it that way you've got that and yeah I slip down a little bit that's why it takes practice but you can make that work and you just pick what you need you know you need some little You need a little triangle. You got a little triangle. All different sizes. So, there you go. Now all I gotta do is finish masking all around through here and again these lines in between the engines I used this one measured what size I needed there and then I would just measure the size I need sorry wrong knife and just Cut down like that. Then I've got four straight corners instead of this edge that you get from the tape or when you tear tape trying to get it off. You've got straight edges so all you would have to do is just line it up either like this if you're doing a couple. Sorry to look at it while I do it or like this either way and you know azu tape is great tape but it's also expensive tape and like I said I need a very thin line oops On camera, okay. So you need a very thin line. See right there, you're on this one, you go over one. Make sure your knife is sharp too. And you just created using only Tamiya tape. A line that thin. 
which it's about half a mil maybe three quarters of a mil so you run a big long piece of tape there and you cut it you know I did that and see they're even smaller over here that's why you need a really sharp knife if you don't have a sharp knife, it's not going to work right. Sharp blade, thin line, right in there. Which one did you do? That one? Go to the next one. And go slow, so you don't do what I did and pull it up. Then you want it smaller, so you cut it this way. You don't want that ragged edge on, so you cut it that way. And you've got yourself definitely less than half a mil. And it's Tammy tape, so it's going to stick right down and peel right up. So I do recommend getting these if you do a lot of masking or you use a lot of Infini tape and you just want to use your Tamiya tape. There's four of them. You can get them at Sprue Brothers. You can get them at High Altitude Hobbies. You can get them at eBay. I don't know where else. My first set came from Sprue Brothers. My second set, which I've already sold my second set, came from high altitude hobbies and I just leave tape on here when I need it I cut it and so far it is masked very well so there's my little mask and tape masking tutorial now I'm gonna go through off camera because you know how to mask mask up make sure all my mask is everything I'm not gonna mask these parts because I'm shooting straight down on the B-17 but I'm going to mask all this because I'll be coming in at an angle and getting in between here these engines right in here on both sides and here on the fuselage so I'm going to mask under there so I probably it's what you're comfortable with since I'll be shooting the wings straight down and at this angle I probably won't mask the whole center part but this whole center part this whole center part the elevators I gotta finish masking up here where I just put that curved part to show you. So, now for all the edges, I'm using Tamiya tape or this is Zuki Mora's new tape, which is a little thinner than Tamiya tape. And I don't have labels on it. This is AK Interactive's new tape, which is seems to be even thinner than the Zuki Morris thin tape but they're all basically the same tape but I do all the edges in one of these tapes places where I might get paint bleed over I'm going to use the good tape which right now is the Zuki Mora tape because I'm testing it out I just got it in for big fill jobs I will use let me reach under here and get it yellow frog tape because it costs less and covers more so the edges will always be good quality Tamiya type tape which right now there's lots of copycats out there like I said this seems a little thinner than Tamiya and you know you gotta make sure that like this one's not level, so I'm going to have to level it out. That one is level. That one... Yeah. I'm going to have to look and see, but this one definitely needs fixed. So, I'm going to do that, get all this stuff masked up, and then we'll do a little spray painting. So, come back and join me. momentarily in your world
All right, we're back. Got my little portable spray booth set up here. Got my mask, got my towels. I'm doing about 70% paint, 30% Thinner mix to start with. Through the airbrush. This is pretty much the only airbrush I use real colors with. But I haven't done it for a while, so. Give this a really good stir. Can you hear me now? Turn it down. So I, got a, I did decide to mask underneath here. Boy, you didn't hear me. I went to overdub. You can see we're doing light mist coat first. Toughest part is finding a place to keep holding on to it. Make sure you don't have any drips down. Clean off your nozzle every once in a while.
Fortunately, AQ Real Color Lacquers dries pretty quick. Sure you get all your leading and trailing edges really good. Look out for cat hair in the tape. When you miss one, <sighs> try and get it out as soon as you can. Normally this wouldn't be a problem, but since I haven't touched this in so long, Watch me struggle taking cat hair out of my model. There we go. That's a good time to maybe lower the elevators a little bit. And the rudder a little bit. Get down in those seams. Actually, that's a really good color. through to make sure I didn't blatantly miss any areas like there.
good lesson for you pet owners out there. For you guys who leave models sitting for a long time like this one has, clean the fuzz out. Let your model sit too long between work. This is going to happen. Keep that in mind if you got a build on the shelf that you haven't been working on, check for fuzzies. But it's so smooth. This AK Real Fillers paint. It's really smooth and it's dried so quick. So, check around. Still have some of the mixture up and this mixture left because next time you mix it, mix it, it may not be the exact same consistency. Know how much paint you're going to use because it's always better to mix a little more than not enough. And there, I think, is a good stopping point. So, we got the olive drab down. I'm going to let this dry. Then in the next video, I'm going to go over it with some of the non-faded. Here's the regular olive drab. It's a little darker. I'm going to go into some panels and just go around, touch up some panels, make it a little more patchy, bring it to life. There you have it. Part 20. Yes, and I put my paint back. It is their thinners. It is their paint. And some of the paints that I use a lot, I actually just mix it in the container. So there you have it. Sorry for the delay. But I do have a mission to get this done in the next four weeks. There you go. And this is the color room we paint the military vehicles with too. So thanks for watching part 20. Here's where we got our olive drab on top. Looking pretty good and faded, just like it would have been. Have a good evening.